Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Today's reading is taken from Psalm 39. To the chief musician for Jeduthun. Jeduthun was one of the chief musicians of David. He was a Levite and the meaning of his word of his name is louder. As I was pondering upon the meaning of his name, I felt that people of God must be louder in praise, in prayer and in worship. We see South Africans, they sing loudly, they pray loudly, they worship loudly and God delights in that kind of worship. Uh, that is just my perspective so singing loudly declaring to the ends of the world how great our god is in verse 1 we understand that david is reflecting upon his life and he realizes that it is very important to stay pure. It is very important not to commit sin. And in order to live a righteous life, he is trying his best by guarding his tongue. In this particular verse, he says that, I will muzzle my mouth as with a bridle. He will force himself not to utter any word that may cause consequences. So muzzling your tongue is very difficult. And when everyone learns how to muzzle our tongue the life on this planet will be very peaceful. He says that even when I was not profitable, I maintained my peace. I did not give away to quarrel. Even I was in my distress. He was silent. What I feel, dear friends, is if we can get these kind of qualities inside us, we can really live a life pleasing to God. Here, David says that while I was musing, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Musing is nothing but he was reflecting on his life, what sort of life he is leading. He is realizing that his life is just like a handbreadth. His days on this land are little. He's asking God to make him know his end. He knows that he's frail, he's weak. His, his staying is transient. Very short period of time he's going to live on this land. So he realizes that And he wants to appreciate God for the number of days he will be alive on this land. So dear friends, uh, when people, they cross this, their 60s or 70s, they do self-realization. They look back 
to the years they lived in their life and they try to maintain a closer relationship with God because they know that their life is short and they want to make a good end on this land appreciating God for his salvation for the life that he has given so why do wait for crossing 60s or 70s of our life start it today because tomorrow you never know whether you will be alive or not start it today and realize that how grateful god is and give praise to him for every breath that he has given to you because life is short every breath is like a million dollar and give give praise to what god has given verse 5 says that my life is like hand breath and my lifetime is nothing in your sight because god is eternal never ending god so our lifetime is is very short on this land so it is nothing to god and every man at his at his best is merely a breath we are just merely a breath when i look at the wall clock no matter how big or how small how expensive the wall clock is when the battery dies clock dies so battery is nothing but like a breath that make that clock uh, to keep running but there is an expiry date for it so our breath on this land may not be permanent but yes we have eternal life so have a self realization of the fact of this world and lead a life pleasing to god if you're angry at someone don't open your mouth stay in peace because god is a judge and he will fight on behalf of you he will give you justice so you don't have to fight your battles hand it over to god he will take care of it verse 6 says that every man walks to and fro like a shadow in a pantomime surely for futility and emptiness he is in turmoil each one heaps up riches not knowing who will gather them everyone is behind riches but they don't realize what will happen to their riches after their death so becoming rich is, is not bad it is good god wants his people to be prosperous but our heart has to be completely broken and we have to give more importance to our relationship with god and we need to maintain a spiritual life pleasing to god and that is the most important thing than riches of this world verse 7 says that my hope and expectation are in you what do i wait for and expect we cannot expect from people because they are just a breath what they plan tomorrow uh they will forget day after tomorrow so they are just like a breath so our expectation should be 
upon the Lord. In my previous videos, dear friends, I applied for a scheme, government scheme, and I did not have sufficient documents. And I asked help for four to five people uh, just to take guidance and uh, was sorting help from them. Uh, but nobody helped me with all their heart. And finally, I was expecting that the Lord will make my work done, even though I did not have sufficient documents. Whatever I had, I submitted. I filled the form and yesterday I got a news that my application is approved. So, dear friends, if we expectantly wait upon the Lord, He will definitely help you. He will help you in your business. He will give you a very good health. Because our hope and expectancy is upon the creator of this world. Verse 8 says that, Deliver me from all my transgression. Why he is saying that? Because he knows the consequences of his transgression. Because it will affect his life. He will have to go through so many attacks, threats. So, he is preparing himself to lead a good life so that the more attacks on his life will not happen. So, he is asking God to deliver him from his transgression. If God is not going to deliver then we have to face the consequences of our transgression. So he's specifically asking God to set him free from his transgression. Verse 9 says that, I open not my mouth, for it is who who has done it. So don't open your mouth because if you open your mouth, things will not change. So hand it over to God and He will take care of your matters. You need to have trust. You need to believe that God will take care of your matters. Remove your stroke away from me. I am consumed by the conflict and the blow of your hand. When you go through a season where God is punishing or when, where God is taking you through a very uh, conflict situation, it is very difficult uh, to survive. When God is bursting out his anger upon you. So David is scared of that and he is asking God to take away the stroke, take away the heart, heart pain, um, take away the attacks, take away the injuries, take away the sudden falls. Uh, he is asking God to... Uh, take away his anger and, and be merciful to him and, and show his love to him. Because our God is a God of judgment and sometimes we feel in our life that God is angry and we are going through the consequences of our sin. But we, dear friends, we need to consistently ask God to be merciful upon us, forgiving our sins and making us pure and helping us to lead a righteous life uh, which he wants us to live. Verse 11 says that when with rebukes you correct and 
chess and man for sin. You waste his beauty like a moth and what is dear to him consumes away. Surely every man is a mere breath. No matter how beautiful you are, but God has the power to uh, to waste his beauty. Everyone is growing old. And when we look at our pictures when we were in our 20s, and now we feel that our beauty is wasting away. Uh, because God has uh, power to take what you have, to take your beauty. Um, so that's the reason we need to pray to God to not to forsake us, not to be angry on us, not to consume us in His fire, but give us life. Give us beauty, uh, give us everything, restore our health, restore our relationship, restore our life. So we can plead God not to be angry on us, but to turn his wrath into love. So that should be our prayer, dear friends. Verse 11 says that uh, every man is a breath. Again, David is saying the same thing. Every man is a breath. Uh, when the birthday celebration happened, um, they celebrate for another year in their life. And um, they conduct parties and functions and uh, gather people and celebrate but i was just thinking um, that celebration is just for a moment because when the breath is there there is life and celebration but our breath is not permanent on this land so we need to realize that and the number of days god has given to us we need to lead our life serving His purpose. Dear friends, don't wait to cross 90s and 80s of your life to have a self-realization. Start it today. Start it today. Because God wants you to be connected to Him deeply. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears, for I am your passing guest, a temporary resident, as all my fathers were. So he is realizing that his forefathers were temporary resident on this land. I was thinking my great-great-grandfathers, they lived almost... Uh, close to 60 to 70 years of their life uh, they passed away after that my grandfather he lived 84 years and then he passed away then my father he lived uh, 78 years and then he passed away and now it is our generation so we don't know when we will pass away but we need to understand that we have been seeing people of our generation are no more. They gone. So now it is our turn. And we don't know how long we will survive. But what we know that we know that we can live a life honoring God and how many days that is written for us. We can make use of that day helping others. Uh, the wealth that God is going to give us, we need to use that wealth to bless people. Whenever I ask wealth to God, I ask God to give me wealth so that I can bless others. So be givers, not takers. So be givers. And the more you give, 
God will give you more. Amen. Let's read the last verse. O oh, look away from me and spare me that I may recover cheerfully and encouraging strength and no gladness before I go and am no more. So he want to experience the goodness of God when he is alive. Because the dead cannot praise God. So that's the reason he is asking God to make me cheerful again. Give me strength. Give me life. And let me witness this. Your good work that you have done in my life. So that I can share that to people and glorify God. So dear friends, whatever God has done in your life, don't keep it to yourself. Share it to the world. Share what God has done. If God has given you healing, share it to someone. Express it to someone. And glorify the name of God. And when you glorify and worship God, not only in prayers and singing, but when you share what God has done in your life to others, you are worshipping and glorifying God in a new and a different way. So keep sharing. Keep blessing the Lord. The Lord is with you. He will strengthen you. He will protect you. He will fight your battles. He will give you peace. And all the days of your life, he will make you cheerful, glad, and fulfilling His purpose. Amen. Praise the Lord. Have a blessed day.